Hello vinyl community, Ken McAuliffe here, the Jazz Vinyl Audiophile, back again today to talk about, you got it right, Music Matters, SRX Pressings. Today we're going to discover, well, you're going to discover, I'm going to discover too probably, uh, Sonny Rollins, Blue Note 1542, a masterpiece, Adam's Apple by the great Wayne Shorter, not his greatest record but still a great record with great tunes on it, a very interesting record by Johnny Griffin called well, kind of known as the blowing session, Blue Note 1559 with the great Hank Mobley and the great John Coltrane blowing their brains out. And finally, the great Grant Green Solid, which was originally available only as an LT pressing, uh, supposedly called inferior LT pressings reissued in the 80s, but actually really great pressings that come close to or better their Tone Poet uh, releases of the same name. Um, overall, I think the LT pressings, the ones that I've heard compared to the Tone Poets, are a little more organic sounding, they, they lack their resolution. Okay, we'll start off with Sonny Rollins. This is a great Sonny Rollins record, and I want to say up front, before we get into the difference between the XRS pressing and my 47 West 63rd Blue Note pressing, regardless of the pressing, this is one of the great jazz records of all time. If you don't own this record, if you've not heard this record, if you've not heard Sonny Rollins, go on Spotify, hear this record first, and then go look for the vinyl. Or buy this overpriced $65 vinyl. You can probably find a reissue online of some provenance. You need to hear this record regardless of what the pressing is, because this is one of the greatest jazz records of all time by one of jazz's most important musicians. The solos on this record are otherworldly. They are... Uh, you know, where, where Wayne Shorter kind of channels the cosmos, you know, channels the universe, channels God, Sonny Rollins is a much more uh, down-to-earth, concrete player. He deals in the here and now. He's cycling and circling all the planets while Wayne is off ch channeling the universe. And the solos on this record are just profound because he's... Each solo touches on like five different themes at once, and he keeps referring back and forth to these different themes. Each one of these themes is a, a, something a lesser saxophonist would make an entire solo of, but Sonny's busy doing five things at once, and he's so melodic and forceful, and he's so brilliant, has such ingenious ideas. And the rhythm section on this record is killing. Wynton Kelly, Gene Raby, Max Roach, and the great Donald Byrd on trumpet. Let's talk about uh, the Music Matters pressing versus, versus my 47 West 63rd pressing. And uh, my system on all of these uh, was my Thorin's um, TD-124 turntable with the Jelco 350S arm and a Denon DL-103 DL uh, cartridge into the new uh, shit Ragnarok 2 amplifier, which I'm reviewing for Sterophile, into the Klipsch Forte uh, horn speakers. Yeah, I'm using an Auditorium 23 step up for the Denon straight into the Muley Magnet cartridge, the Muley Magnet phono stage of the Ragnarok. The Ragnarok is a great clear amplifier. I'll get into that playing the Sonny Rollins 1542 Music Matters SRX pressing, a very big detailed layered stage. The piano and the drums I thought were a little recessed. Overall good horn tone. Uh, Rollins solos are big, very biting, very dynamic, rich and smooth. To me that's the trademark of all Music Matters pressing compared to anything is they're rich, they're smooth, they're sometimes soft, they lack the ultimate in dynamics, but uh, even on a, I mean, frankly, outrageous system like mine, my other turntable is the Kuzma Stabi R. The Thorns is a little more dynamic table. All the Music Matters pressings are a little, in absolute terms, soft, but they're very rich and they're very lush and they're easy to love. The trumpet tone, Donald Burr's trumpet tone on the Sonny Rollins pressing, Music Matters XRS pressing uh, had good bite, good tone. The bass was big but has no definition, it's rather blob like. Uh, quiet vinyl, very nice. A very uh, satisfactory pressing. Is it worth 65 bucks? I don't know. Compared to my 47 West 63rd 
um, pressing. I thought my pressing was superior to the XRS pressing. A much bigger mono spot. Um, for you, those of you who don't understand the thing between stereo and mono, mono recordings of jazz, sort of regardless of label, have much more force, more power, more dynamics. They're more fun. They're just more boosting and kicking out of the gate than the stereo of the same period because stereo was young then in the late 50s early 60s and I don't think they quite knew what they were doing with it yet um, uh, you lose definition on a mono pressing but you gain much more force and drive the mono center fill on the 47 with 63rd Street pressing was much bigger more dynamic more forceful more burning more pointed more surging uh, there was more leading edge of the horns in the good way you know horn whether it's a reed or a trumpet, brass-like instrument, has bite. A real horn in your face has bite. You know, it's pushing out energy through this metal or uh, wooden tube, and it has bite with a great player. More energy on the 47 with 63 playing, pressing much more live in general. Bass and drums are better integrated. That's a weird thing with um, all music matters pressing, to my way of thinking. Sometimes the solo instruments are disconnected from the rhythm section in a, in a, in a very slight way, but they are, oddly apart uh, on, on the music matters pressing of this Sonny Rollins 1542 the bass and drums sound rather muted there's much better integration on the 47 West 63rd pressing um, images are slightly larger there is definitely more definition on the bass and drums if they are a little more lightweight overall uh, sax tone was heightened overall and more forceful the piano on the 63rd pressing is more open and less muted um, and the trumpet is more burnished and reflective off the walls. My general, one of my other complaints about Music Matters pressings is they're very lush and beautiful and rich, but they erase the studio. There's much less of a sense of instruments in a room. You, can, you can't even hear it anymore. And this is a good example of it. The 47 Whiskey 63rd pressing, you can hear the trumpet bouncing off the walls. That's what I want to hear. I want to be in the studio with those guys as they're making the record. I want to be in the control room. Even more than on a live gig, which would be really, really great, I want to be in an environment where everything is controlled and I can really hear it. And that's a recording studio. And, and that's, a, that's a line through all the Music Matters pressings. They seem to erase the studio. I don't know if that's because the tapes are 60 years old. You know, when you remaster a record, you are making decisions of some sort in the mastering chain, even if you're going straight to tape. Uh, from tape to the lacquer cut. You are making, making some sort of decisions. Why the Tone Poet releases to me seem to have more upper frequency air, that seems to be their thing, but there is a better sense of the studio, of the musicians being at Englewood Cliffs or Hackensack regarding the Blue Note records. Uh, I don't understand why that is, but it does seem to be true, even with these SRX pressings. Anyway, uh, so for the, I would rather own my $200, I paid 200 bucks for this 47 with 63rd. I saw a jazz record center. I understand that. It's a very hard thing to find. Um, but generally speaking, if you want more energy, more focus, more drive, I would buy any Blue Note up to the Liberty era reissue than a Music Matters. But this also depends on your system, what you're playing it back through, uh, how revealing your system is. Um, maybe it's not worth searching out some, you know, Liberty or New York pressing to get that energy and drive. Everybody has. Uh, their criteria and at the end of the day you need to just hear this music regardless of what the pressing is uh, this is what I think of as a Wayne Shorter's R&B record there's more funky tunes happen on there more everything's driving but it's more eighth note in some ways even though Footprints is on here which was also covered by the great Miles Davis Quartet um, so playing the my pressing the Liberty pressing I have um, it's dynamic it's clean good popping energy uh, the horn sounds burnished and crisp. The cymbals are clean and punchy. Uh, uh, it's a good, forceful Liberty pressing uh, cut from, you know, Rudy Van Gelder has the Rudy Van Gelder and the Dead Wax. The XRS Adam's app Apple was softer, has less attack. The cymbals are fuller and sweeter. The bass has more grip. It's a fuller sounding pressing overall. Music Matters pressings are uniformly full and rich and big, um, but less force, less attack larger images, softer overall. Uh, the horn was fuller uh, and a little deeper. And the best thing about the XRS pressing was, and this may be the quiet vinyl in comparison to my Liberty pressing, there seemed to be more subtlety, more micro nuance. Things like uh, the notes in a drum fill, uh, the fluttering notes of a, of a saxophone line. There seemed to be a little more focus in, in the smallest 
uh, micro in the micro dynamics, but it's not dynamics per se, it's the actual information. I heard a little better definition of those very soft uh, information notes. So that was really cool. Um, but again, for me, I, uh, you know, I have a high-end crazy stereo. Uh, I prefer the Liberty overall because it's got more drive and attack and it sounds more alive. And I think I paid 20 bucks for it. Uh, the, the Johnny Griffin is interesting because um, I have the XRS pressing here to, uh, to compare to, I didn't know, even know I had it, a sealed Music Matters um, 45 RPM. I didn't know I had it. That was, I was like, wow, this will be really cool. Because uh, I used to believe, and this review sort of changed that, that 40, 45 RPMs by Music Matters had a bigger sound overall than the regular 33 and thirds. Anyway, the Griffin XRS blowing session, drums are dead center, the bass is kind of blobby, uh, uh, good horn tone, drums sounded good with good splash, uh, a big full rich stage, another uh, Music Matters trademark, bass sounds unnaturally big and heavy, but good energy, even though the bass is overblown, drums are full, good rich uh, tactileness on the, on the uh, trumpet. I thought it was interesting the trumpet sits above the tenor in the stage, which kind of surprised me. Very good uh, sound staging and detail. Um, compared to the 45 RPM though, the 45 just totally paled by comparison to the XRS pressing. And maybe this has something to do with that vinyl, quieter vinyl, I don't know. But the uh, on the 45 pressing, there was more air, but it was less involving, evolving overall, a smaller center fill mono spot. The bass was the same. The music sounds more recessed, the horn sounded more constricted, uh, thinner, there was less, way less dynamic range, a slightly better different on, definition on the drums, and it seemed a little tipped up, a little forward in the treble. Um, but this is the one comparison of these three that I'm doing that was really obvious. The XRS just kicked the ass of the Music Matters 45 RPM. Uh, it just sounded like the band had shrunk, and it sounded like the band was starving. And they were getting all getting thinner and constricted and didn't have any energy. Uh, but on the uh, XRS, they sound like they just had a steak and everybody's feeling good, have a few drinks, you know. A much more enjoyable recording. So that one was easy. Then finally, you know him, you love him, you buy everything you've ever put out. The great Grant Green. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really dug this. Uh, this was, was an LT pressing. Um, and I probably heard at some point or another, but uh, what a beautiful cover, right? Holy smoke. Now I wonder, was the green, was that Francis? Well, probably. But, um, you know, it'd be cool to see a video on how they, how records are laminated, how covers are laminated. There are many uh, videos of, uh, of uh, records being pressed, but I've never seen one of an album jacket being laminated. And Francis Wolf, you know, this is part of the beauty of the Blue Nut legacy. You have the great Reed Miles designs. You have the incredible Rudy Van Gelder music, rather all the great music recorded by Rudy. And you have the amazing photographs of uh, Francis Wolf. I mean, geez, they're just astounding, you know? I mean, look at that. They're just in, in the, they're still just as beautiful as they've ever been. Really, really something. Um, anyway, this is a great, if you're into uh, Grant Green, even for 65 bucks, this is a must have recording. The drums sound really fantastic. Tons of air, they're really big. It's a really, really beautiful session. Anyway, that's my take on these four Music Matters pressings that uh, they would not let me buy. I had to have a friend of mine buy them because they would not take my money because I'm persona non grata Music Matters. Jeez, I'm just one little guy with an opinion. I cause all this trouble. Give me a break. Anyway, thanks for taking in. I hope you enjoy these videos. Please subscribe because I have uh, many children to, uh, to feed all over the world. Thanks for checking in. Bye-bye.